Great. So uh, deep breaths. Now you guys are probably more used to this than I am because you've all done podcasts. No, Lindsay has. I have. I have. have. Some of you have done podcasts. Um, <clears throat> so that puts you ahead of me. Um, my experience is, is teaching. So the three of you, Kate, yeah. Caitlin, we're a part of the lunchtime meters. You yes. guys. <laughs> What's that like? Is it getting easy for you to interview people? Yeah, it, it's really easy. Even we have live and over the internet interviews sometimes. Sometimes I just don't notice that we're live. And I just yeah. yeah. I that's think the that's the problem. Where you just get into it. Yeah. Going. The first interview was definitely very, a little, you, we were all tense and all a little nervous, but then after the first interview, it was like second nature. So. And it's better when they have like more of a personality because they, they calm you down talking about stuff that you, you have interest in too. I like it when they come to us. I don't really like the Skype calls. Well, I prefer um, when they come to us. So it's uh, alive. Yeah. Yeah. Easier yeah. to connect. How come? What's the difference? Well, I don't know. I just like it when they're there. I just eye contact for one. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. And if you can, you can see like if they show that they're a little nervous, you kind of relax because they're in the same position that you are. Interesting. Have you ever had anybody that's like a little difficult that just answers? Yes, yes. Was yes. like page-long <coughs> answers, and we had to try and interrupt them constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I fail at that. Yeah. So hard. <laughs> yeah, your your um, talk across the street mentioned that. Did you ever get any answers where like you have no idea what they're talking about? They answer the question. And That's why we have a yeah. computer, and Mr. Bogish like tells us things during the interview. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> so. this means this. So is he busy on Wikipedia, <laughs> interpreting for you, <laughs> or he just knows it all? He knows it all. He knows it all. We get that on film. Mr. Bogish knows it all. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're ready to roll. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna um, start with just maybe. Oh, 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 one more thing. So if you, if you can think of it, if you can think of it, answer us kind of like well, the way we're going to edit it is so that we, you don't hear our voices on the final cut. So that means that it's it's kind of on you to answer like repeating the question. So if we say what. You know, so we say who's, yeah, he told who's us your that. teacher. Mr. Bo uh, Paul Bogish is my teacher. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Paul Bogish is our teacher. Yeah, because yeah, he <coughs> said that they, you want to answer it like it's an answer, but also a statement instead of mm -hmm. like you're answering a question. But, but if that makes you like stiffen up, Mr. Bogish is our teacher, like, we can see you work and try to remember it, then we'll, we'll just dump that in because we really want to just chat. Yeah. That's All right. So the first question that I'm really interested in is, and, and we were sort of doing this during the sound check, is why did you each contribute to this program or project? And, and how did you think about what you picked? Um, I think deciding on what we were going to archive really depended on what we enjoyed and what we focused on and looked at most often and what re represented us as teens in the 21st century. So you, Caitlin, what did you, what, did you, what represents Caitlin? Um, I did a lot of jewelry sites because I love, I like to like accessorize jewelry and I did a lot of like, I did Barnes and Noble to represent because I love to read and I love to see what's new and stuff like that. Great. Well, I chose a lot of sites that represented me by socializing because I love just talking to family and friends at any time during the day. And there are a lot of websites out there that let me do that and that means like a lot to me because I get to talk to family and friends whenever I'd like to. So, so for example, name a couple of your favorites. Well a lot of my family they go to colleges outside of the United States like my cousins they're all older than me so a lot of times they aren't even in the United States but that allows me to talk to them and stay in touch and find out what they're doing and that really interests me like what they do. So is there a particular website that's really good for these international conversations? The website that I most enjoy would be um, Facebook.com because you can chat with people, you can look at their photos, see what's new in their life and stuff, and I just really enjoy that. Great. So. You like that, that on Facebook if that it shows your responses, or if you like I am better or texting better where, where, you know, where, where people can't actually see your conversation? Does that mean anything more to you one way or another? To me, it would depend on what the conversation is about. Like, if it's a private conversation, I would just, like, talk with them over chat, or I would AIM them or even text them. But if it's, like, 
something we're talking about and enjoying to do. Other people can come in and talk to us too, and we can have a bunch of people having a conversation at once. So I enjoy that more, but it depends on the conversation. And, and, uh, Leah, how about the sites that you chose? Um, what was important to you? Um, um, a lot of this, a lot of the sites I chose were kind of based on what I visited, visited a lot when I go on the computer and stuff. Um, um, for school or? Yeah, I sometimes go on the school website to like blog and hobbies. Um, I do play a lot of video games, so I go on like a lot of fan websites. What's your favorite fan website for video games? Um, my favorite um, video game fan website is um, brawlandfamily.com, and um, this person who runs it, uh, he draws a lot of web comics um, to entertain the people, and the comics star a lot of the video game characters, and a lot of people enjoy them. How about you, Lindsay? Um, I picked a lot of the sites that Katie uses because I have family from like around the country, mm -hmm. so I also use Facebook a lot. So I, because I like to stay in touch with my family and friends. Now, when you guys go home today and get on a computer, assuming you're going to get on a computer at home, like, when you go to all the sites you just told us about, is that pretty much what you're going to do? Is pull that up at some point? Those sites? Yeah. 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 So you come with some some of the same interests, but some different different interests. And I'm guessing as we work with the other groups, we're going to hear from students who have even more interests. As a group, how did you choose which ones went in, or or was it was the budget enough that everybody could pretty much do what they wanted? Um, as a group, I think that we all chose different websites. Like if you look at our whole list of websites and you just look at one of those websites, that doesn't mean a thing, because that doesn't mean that, if it's about reading books like Caitlin likes, that doesn't mean we all chose sites that, in, that we enjoy to use because we read books. It would just be like a whole different um, types of sites, and they all resemble our character and our likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at the list of websites, you can definitely see the diversity that all the kids have, but then you can also see some major similarities that we share between the websites that we but we all go on. Yeah. Not to put you on the spot, but but I'm, I'm fascinated by that question of what you can learn by looking at the whole group of websites. Um, what do you think somebody looking at this from outside um, would would deduce or infer about you know middle schoolers in Wallingford in 2010? An inference question is always tough, but I, I get a sense you guys have thought about this before. Um, that we had, there was a lot of like uh, different stores and shopping, so they, there was a lot of just clothing uh, websites, and um, I think there were also a lot of like sports websites, so they'll know that we're athletic and we like to shop pretty much. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's so many new sites coming out all the time, and if we archive the sites now, they can get a sense of what it would be like for us in the 21st century. Because by in the future there might be different sites, like many different sites that they've probably never even heard about the sites that we visit. So if we find a way to show them what we did, they get a sense of how we lived, and it would just give them this idea in their head about kids in the twenty first century. Did you learn anything about about each other? And I, and I don't mean in any deep sense, like you know, without naming names. If you like, see some boy site or some other girl site, you say, wow, I agree with that. Well, yeah, I never even knew that a lot of us played instruments. Like, my uh, Matt, he chose a lot of websites that had guitar tabs, and I never even knew he was interested in guitar, and I thought that was really interesting. Just by looking at his list, I noticed that. I realized that Leah likes, like, I didn't realize how much she was into video games, and then I looked at all her sites, and I, th I thought that was really cool, though. Because most, I don't see a lot of girls who like video games, but I thought that was really cool. 
So that's the sort of thing you wouldn't necessarily learn in other school activities about each other. Was that tough to, to, because that gets kind of personal. You know, you're, you know the assignment was, was to get something that really represents you, so you have to put yourself out there and you know, show them. Was that tough for you guys to do? It's really hard for me to like express myself and put myself out there because I'm afraid of being judged. I thought it was easier because you get to at least express yourself over the computer instead of like face to face telling people what you like and dislike. So if they were to look at your page, that means they would have an interest in what you would do. So instead of just coming out and telling them, you want to make sure that they would be interested first. Yeah, I think my point of view would probably be mutual. I think some websites were easier to archive than some others. Some others I felt like uh, I'm not really sure if how people will react, but some of them I was just like, most people do go on the site, so it's, we share that common interest. What do you mean would be easier to, to archive than others, like for which web, for example? Probably Facebook, because a lot of people have Facebook accounts, and we all share the interest in going on it, and I thought that'd be a lot easier to archive than some of the other personal sites, such as the reading that not many people like to do. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Since we all enjoy that same thing, it would be easier to just put out there without like saying something like, I enjoy playing piano. What if you don't want people to know that? That would be something that you wouldn't really choose to put out there first. But since Facebook is like worldwide and every a lot of people use it every day, it's so much easier to just put out there on the spot. Well, and let me flip that. Because so many people use Facebook, I have a Facebook account, I use it for some of the same reasons that you guys do. Um, because so many people use it, there's less to be learned from that. You know, I, I get much less of, you know, I don't know as much about Lindsay. If I read her Facebook page, I'd probably begin to put some pieces together, but just the fact that you have a Facebook page doesn't really tell me much. Did it, how long did it take you to get comfortable enough to say, you know, this is really what I do and this is who I am and I want to tell the world who I am? This is probably one of those variable answers. I think probably one of, like, as the first class was a little, like, we were just learning, so we weren't quite sure, but I think after the first two or three classes, we start, felt, we felt a lot more comfortable, and it was a lot easier to archive the websites. Yeah, and I don't think this was um, a process that would be stressful to, like, put out there. I think it was fun. I enjoyed myself. I didn't mind putting things out there, but other people thought it was, like, stressful because they were worrying about what people would think about them, and... They were worried to just put things out there. So I thought it was easy for me, but for some people it might not be. And I wasn't there for the first class. So the second class when I came and I saw what everyone's doing, I relaxed a little because I realized they were all having fun and no one was worried about what they were doing. I don't think your names are on the mind. No. No, they're... they're um, we have initials on Google spreadsheets. Yeah, but that's not made. That's, that's not part of the permanent yeah. archive. No. So as far yeah. as what the world sees, they just see what students of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be much different because since it doesn't have our name, it would just be like, oh, I have a sense that this person enjoys sports. You wouldn't know the person, but you'd at least see an interest that they have. It's really this group of kids. Yeah. yeah. But it made it easier for you right then. Yeah. yeah. How much did you just, I'm going off script, how much did you look at last year's project before you started, or was that even a factor? Mm. We didn't really look at last year's stuff when we were on the website, the, the archive website a few days ago. Um, I did look into um, the schools for this year that were participating and some of the last year's website people too. Yeah, and we also took some of the same categories from last year, like we did enter entertainment, shopping, and socializing just like last year's class did. And I think the first day he did show us some of the um, sites they put out, but they were all different because in just one year, all the new sites are just developing and all the old sites are kind of just being put behind. And they archived sites that we thought were like older sites. And we archived sites that we thought were new, but in the future, I think they're gonna think that they are way old, <laughs> but. Well, you mentioned um, MySpace. 
Right, is MySpace even still out there? That was big like a year or two ago, MySpace, but this year this year it's like Facebook now, yep. but I, I come across right. people who still have MySpaces and they ask if I do, and I said I never even had one been to everyone and the only thing with privacy that we should worry about is he gives us topics that are sometimes personal yeah. and we post like things that are sometimes personal and that just worries us about our privacy but other than that I think it's really fun people can just come to our website see all the work that we've done who we've interviewed and what we've archived yeah. and put on your own like at home you know? do you ever worry about you know when you are doing stuff on Facebook do you, do you wonder whether Facebook has got you covered or whether you know some of the stuff can get hacked do you ever think about privacy not that you have to just wonder yeah. what you wonder about um in the beginning I was a little iffy about it but then um there's a lot of different settings that you can set your profile yeah, page yeah. Yeah. so like people that are searching you can't necessarily see your actual page but they could see your name and picture hey perfect way thank you thanks for calling down yeah, I, I agree with Caitlin. And people who aren't your friends on Facebook, they can't like go to your profile and just learn about you. And you can block them from seeing any pictures about you because you got to know that if you want to be friends with someone, you have to know them first or else your privacy is just gone. Cool. That, that's kind of the same with YouTube. I don't have a Facebook, but I do have a YouTube account. Um, when I'm on YouTube, um, sometimes I get friend messages from people I don't know, so I usually ignore them. But first... I consider them and I look at their channel and if they're just older than me and they are not interested in what I'm interested in, I just reject them. YouTube doesn't have privacy settings, it um, really doesn't. Sometimes, like you can choose to hide your channel and you can like hide your personal information. Mm -hmm. You don't put your names or your faces. You don't put your no. Names, you don't put your I do that with my daughters. Anytime I put anything up with my daughters, I never use their names. I use just something like, you know, playing in the field. Something yeah. Like that. Don't use the word girls. And, like that. And, in, and in the sites that you guys uh, archive, I don't think we've got Facebook, right? Oh, yeah, I put Facebook. Yeah. A lot of us actually did. I, yeah. I put Facebook. It locked. What's that? That's weird. Have you chosen a, 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 a seed, a URL you want to archive? Um, like, what do you mean? To, to demonstrate this to me. All right, I'll just do, do like Facebook. That's, yeah. That's an easy one. Yeah. All right. I'll just. So. Let's back up. Let's, let's say that somebody's watching you right now, watching any of you, and they have no idea. They don't know. Just talk about that a little bit. What, what you're going to be doing, what you're using. It would just be like the site that I'm right. archiving right now. To archive a site, you have to choose a category. And I'm going to choose social network, social networking. <laughs> what? It logs me off. Pull back and then web archive one. So you start by selecting a category, but maybe we could just, as Mike was getting to before we had this flurry, um, can you just describe what the project is? Because we like a, just people. Some people watching this won't have a clue what you're doing. So you can, what is the K-12 Web Archiving Program? We are archiving websites that we use every day. Like you just type in a website and you can get information and entertainment off of it depending on what you are on. Okay. What we're doing is um, taking pictures of them by typing in the website into a file of some sort. Okay. So you're using, do you know the name of this tool? Can't 
and then the websites we choose mostly reflect on us as teams and what we like to do and what we like and dislike. So not one site is really going to stand, well, they're all going to stand out on their own, but not really blend together. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing from you is the individual websites are important to individual people. Yeah. But it's all the websites together. That resemble all different teens in the 21st century to me. But. Hey. Just look it over your shoulder. So what I'm doing now is... So what I'm doing now is adding a seed or a website. I'm just going to use Facebook for example. And now it's telling me how often they're going to take pictures of the website. And... Um, and they're going to show the home page, right? Yeah, so just do once. Yeah, and the reason they take the pictures is because over time, each website like develops and gets new logos, new pictures, and it's a different way of representing the site over time. So we take it either monthly or weekly or every even, even every day or every other month. Hourly, daily. Yeah. And how do you make those decisions? Well, Depending you, you, on yeah, the website. If it's a popular website, it's probably going to be more often you want to update it. And if it's not, then you want to just keep it like the same. Such as like sports websites like ESPN, you might want that to do constantly because there's constantly new information being posted. And I just added it, and um, I just viewed a collection to see it. So I click on all of them. And I don't know where I put it though. <laughs> Which one did you click on? Is that the social networking? Yeah. Yeah, social networking. Hey, did you do that? Did you experience this during the project? Did you put in a seed and did you ever lose any? Mm, I never did. I didn't I personally. So. It was a very organized process oh, though. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was very you learn the directions and then you knew exactly where to go because it showed you every step of the way. Yeah, the more often you did it, the more it stuck with you and the easier it was just to follow the process. Yeah. Okay. So can you describe that organized process? I mean, Leah's been showing us click by click, but just in words, what is that process? Well, I feel that the process was actually kind of long to document one website. Like, it would take five minutes just to document one website and usually in class we tried to get like 10 websites in and so the process was it was fun except just imputing the websites into the um, archives it was a long process but it was worth it in the end I think and then sometimes people would pick the same websites so you'd have to decide who was going to do what website mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely agree I think the process um, it took a long time, but I think it was worth it in the end run, but it did, like there were a lot of steps, but once you did it once, it was just easy. Tell me a little bit about, about the descriptions, because using the aliens and you know, the future people or whatever, you know, what example you're going to get, somebody in the future will look back and do the search and pull up the stuff that you've archived as, as model stuff of middle school interests in 2002. Mr. Bogus told us to um, make the descriptions as descriptive as possible and to try to use words not slang, like can't, and, and today's slang. And, stuff. and if there was a word that someone in the future might not understand, he would have us describe, like, exactly, like, tell them what this word meant if a certain website, like, I know a lot of girls did anime websites. And I have no idea about anime, but there are a lot of words that I didn't understand, so they had to go back and describe what those were, like certain types of people, and they had to describe them, because if they didn't, just someone in the future would be looking at this and wondering, what does all this all, all of this mean? What is anime? And so they just did a very good description, I think. And he also didn't want just like one sentence descriptions. He wanted like five to six sentences on each, just to describe, give a good description of what the website was and 
what the pros and cons of the website was. I think I, I definitely do think differently because because of this project now these websites will be saved and if it wasn't for this project they might just not be remembered and just disappear. I yeah, yeah. they won't live for, they won't stay forever and now because they will. Yeah, cuz I totally agree. I think that we need to pres preserve the past and the present to make useful in the future. So every website on the internet has its own unique characteristic and if we just forget about them, then no one in the future will have any idea about what we did and what was important to us in the 21st century. I agree too, because I didn't realize how many websites, like when we looked at them from last year, I didn't realize how many websites were so old, because like 20 years from now, most of the websites we use today probably won't still be around. That's why we gotta like keep them while yeah. keep them while we have yeah. them. Mm -hmm. I want to add just one last last question. Cheryl's putting together the program for next year, um, and we really are learning from you guys. From, from whatever you do, we look at it. Oh, geez, we, we should do this better. We should do that. What advice do you have for the Internet Archive? The people made archives that you have for us. Anything you'd like to see different? Anything you'd like to see more of? Um, I thought maybe that when we are like filling in the description and everything, maybe having a picture of the website could, because the picture might be a little more interesting than the actual description, so maybe having a visual image might increase the, like, you wanting to visit and see what this website's all about. And, so you oh. mean when they could be the public page? Yes. And I think that this whole process can go on for a longer period of time, because it, to, to me, this was really quick. Like I wanted to keep going, but mm -hmm. it was just it ended, and I was like, "Wow, that was a really fast experience. It was great." But I just thought that we could have gone longer because every day there are new sites coming out that can use some attention, and this is the perfect way for sites to start to develop. I thought that um, archiving websites was fun, but maybe if we archived other things like maybe TV shows or everyday items we use would make it more interesting. Talk about that for a minute. You guys, have, you guys all have cell phones? Yeah. yeah. Pictures? What's going to happen with those pictures? You're not going to keep them forever. Are you saying that like you're not going to keep them forever? Or do you well, think about how you're going to keep them forever? Or what do you think about It would be really difficult to keep any picture forever, but today a lot of people use their computers to have to keep their pictures on. But sometimes things happen where computers break and you can't keep those pictures; they they're all gone. So for me, I like just printing my pictures out and trying to keep them in like a file. But over the internet, just because you have pictures on the internet doesn't mean they'll stay on the internet for too long unless you document the website like we are doing. Like if you put your pictures on a website and then you, people never even visit the website. If you were to preserve that website, you can always go back to it in the future and look at all your pictures. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about games? Do you want to see games preserved? Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, mostly like the games that, um, started it all, like all the really old games like the Nintendo Entertainment System. Maybe we can preserve some of the best-selling games. 